here with Professor Neil Wynn, who's a professor of 20th century American history. Hi, Neil. Hi, Christian. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, we're here to talk about the... Um, obviously, it's been in the news recently that there seems to have been a, an attack of the government on American literature, supposedly. So there's been kind of a, an outcry against the uh, lack of inclusion of American novels in uh, school curriculum. Um, what's your reaction? To this. Well, you know, it's interesting that you use the word attack. I'm not sure it's quite an attack, but yes, I mean, everybody has been up in arms about the dropping of American literature from most of the school syllabuses now. Um, and obviously, as an American historian like yourself, we're, we're sorry to see that happen. And most of us have grown up reading American literature as part and parcel of our um, educational background. And clearly, you know, American literature covers so many subjects which are relevant to the modern world, particularly race and gender issues. Um, quite often youth issues, a lot of the youth literature, if you like, from Jack, Jack Kerouac on the road, um, Salinger's Catcher in the Rye, there's been that kind of tradition of literature which has had a wide appeal to young people. And I assume that's one of the reasons that it was in the school syllabuses anyway. Um, and, but I think probably there's a bigger issue that has been lost sight of here, and that is, you know, it shouldn't just be about American literature. Um, I can imagine our European historians saying, where was Camus, where was Sartre, where was Simone de Beauvoir, uh, Dostoevsky, where's the great European literature in the syllabuses? And I'm not sure that they would be very well represented either. And so I think, you know, as historians, as American historians, we must deplore the loss of American literature. I mean, it's a sad event. Having said that, all these syllabuses are selective. They've got to select somehow. They've got to have some kind of focus. Um, one accepts that. And what I would say is, you know, you want to encourage students to read as widely as possible. Now, one of the things about American literature, I think, was its accessibility and its appeal, that it encouraged people to read literature generally. So it's not just about American literature. After all, you're only talking in most cases about one or two novels that have gone. So you kind of wonder, well, you know, of all the American literature, why those two? Yeah, I suppose, I mean, with the recent passing of Maya Angelou as well, uh, we're kind of reminded of some of the, um, some of the power of some of these novels, particularly in the 20th century, of, of American literature that have been so important in communicating not only to an American or British audience, but across the world, really. Uh, and I suppose this leads me to my next item of discussion, if you like, is uh, as 20th century historians of, uh, of the United States, how can literature be useful to the historian? Well, it's enormously uh, valuable. Uh, and Mayor Angelou is a very good example. Mayor Angelou used to be on the British school syllabuses. I know why the cage bird sings, and it's just a great book, um, and hopefully people will read it anyway, and uh, one would encourage them to read exactly that kind of thing. Why should a historian read things like Mayor Angelou? Um, Mayor Angelou lived through some of the major events in American, and particularly African American history, from the 1930s all the way through to her death just the other day. Um, so, you know, you read her novels, you get personal experiences. A, of growing up black in the South in the 20s and 30s, growing up black and female in the South. And from a personal perspective, it just adds so much more. The experience of the Depression years in America for African Americans, World War II. But she went on to um, live in Africa, to be involved in civil rights. She met Martin Luther King. She met Malcolm X. She was a kind of living testimony to you know, major experiences in American and African American history. And literature provides powerful insight. Now, that's autobiography, so it's probably rather different. But if you took something like On the Road, Jack Kerouac's On the Road, you might think that adds nothing particularly historical. But it does, because it's about you know, a particular moment in time, the quest for the American dream. Um, it's Particularly about, because it tells us about the 
kind of emerging sense of division in the United States as well, youth cultures, um, and it can tell us much about the other side of history that perhaps students don't study as much at school, and it's the not necessarily the more political or um, economic centres of traditional historical studies, but we're talking about individuals, yeah. uh, alienation from those things like yeah. the Cold War. And but also it's a very interesting book because it picks up on white American youth culture and their relationship, say, to the other, to Mexican-American culture and African-American culture, particularly jazz, which plays a role in it, the car culture. It's also interesting, you know, kind of underclass in an affluent society who drive across Europe in their car and seem to have endless money. But I would say no student should graduate without having read On the Road. It's just an essential part of being a teenager and of growing up. It's one of those rites of passage, reading books like that. But again, I make the point, you know, there's just a huge canon of literature. And one has to go back to your original starting point and to say, you know, one of the things that has come out of this is that the books in American literature which have gone have been replaced to some extent by you know, um, non-white uh, British literature. One would like to see some more post-colonial literature. Um, there is just, the problem is there's too much literature. And so you're saying to people, read, read, read. Whether you're a history student, a religion student, an English literature student, the fact is we want to encourage people to read literature. American literature did that, and it's a tragedy that's gone.